It's one of those things that we encourage people um, to spend uh, time and in, invest effort in developing. Um, well, yes, sure. You mentioned image. Of course, mm -hmm. somebody mentions Chester. They get sure. Image, sure. But it's a very negative. That's image. correct. How do we overcome that? Well, there's, you know, the, the question of how do you deal with a negative image is one of, first of all, having a clear understanding of the, dis of the distinction between the reality and the perception. Oftentimes, the perception is going to be worse than the reality, even when things are bad. So the first thing we have to do is um, we have to generate an, an understanding of the depth of the, the perception of the problem and the depth of the reality. Uh, we do that in two ways. When, when communities have a negative image, they're usually related to one of two things. It's either crime or it's litter, trash, dirt, those sort of things. And that's what the Safe and Clean Committee is designed to combat. Um, but the question becomes, what's the difference between perception and reality? Oftentimes, in many communities, the, the perception has been driven by things that happened a while ago. You know, things have gotten better, but the perception has lingered on and on. So we do a couple of things. Number one, when we have communities that have a perception problem, right? Um, the first thing we do is we come in and we say, okay, what are the perceptions focused around? You know, what are the problems? Is it crime? Is it litter? Is it trash? Is it some sort of, um, you know, it can be political with a small p. Um, we, we try to get a sense of that. Then we try to measure it in two ways. Um, we have something we call a general image uh, development report that we do for communities. And what it is, is it's an online system. Um, we ask the community to market the site but then a, a, a specific um, page on our website is set up for a given community, in your, your case, Chester. Um, and people would be asked to go to that website and um, click on a whole series. There's probably about 35 or 40 different, real brief questions. You know, it would say, you know, Chester is safe, Chester is clean, Chester is, has a vibrant nightlife. You know, a whole series of questions like that. And it's kind of one of those Likert scale things from, you know, strongly agree to strongly disagree. And we oftentimes, we just did it for Reading. Uh, Reading is going to be announced as the Commonwealth's newest community in the Keystone Communities Program. Actually, tomorrow, Secretary Walker is going over there. We just did this in Reading. and 750 people um, respond to the online survey. Most of the times when we do this, we're well into the hundreds of people because it's promoted locally. They put you know, PSAs on radio stations and advertisements in newspapers. Um, so that gives us a, a sense of the, the, the breadth of the perception because we can measure the, the percentage of people that respond um, either positively or negatively to these various questions. But the next thing that we do is we go out and we actually measure the problem itself. So if it's crime, uh, we will look at the state police crime statistics for that particular community. We'll talk to the police department about the ability to generate the numbers at a smaller scale than the municipal level so we can determine whether the problem is downtown, is it in a neighborhood, is it out in an industrial area, where does the, you know, if there's a, if there's a real problem, where does it exist? Now, if it's litter and, and dirt and graffiti and all those sorts of things, we've actually worked with Keep America Beautiful to develop a litter index. So we actually will bring in you know, a team of people into a town and measure, quantify the amount of, of dirt, litter, trash, garbage that exists in a community. So now what we've done is we've got both positive, I mean perceptual and actual data on the nature of the problem. And then we make certain that as part of the strategy that's put together that there are um, plans put in place to deal with both the reality and the perception. And we teach the, um, the promotions committee and to a certain extent the organization committee 
how to market the successes, how to celebrate the successes. You know, if, if there's going to be a, you know, if there's a litter problem, a graffiti problem, at the end of a year, you know, how many tags have we removed? How many buildings have we visited and taken graffiti off the wall? How many cleanups have there been? How many tons of trash have we taken off of the street? And we begin to celebrate and recognize and show the improvements to those realities um, over time. And, you know, it's, it's, those kind of problems are the things that if, if you aren't safe and you aren't clean to start out with, then don't bother doing the rest of this because you're, you're flushing money down the toilet. Yes, sir. How do you respond to pockets of poverty or cultural density in terms of population, which is so much a part of our inner city? I think that um, the Elm Street program, particularly, well, understand that when we're talking about these pockets of poverty and, and the issues that go along with that, those oftentimes are in the neighborhoods more so than in the central business district. Elm Street. Over here where you see economic restructuring for Main Street, in Elm Street we actually have something called Neighbors and Economy. And in Elm Street, what we teach Elm Street managers to do is actually go in and conduct an analysis of the social services, the institutions that are in the neighborhood delivering services. And oftentimes what we find is that there are gaps in the service delivery. Certainly in, in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, the, those neighborhoods, and some of the larger third-class cities, those gaps are, are smaller in many respects than they are when you get into third-class cities or large boroughs who don't have the same resources. Now, we don't expect Elm Street managers to become social service providers, but what we do expect Elm Street programs to do is recognize that there are needs here that are not being met and try to find partners that come in and deliver those services. So it may be, you know, in Gettysburg, for instance, we're working in a neighborhood um, with an Elm Street program there that is, was traditionally the African American neighborhood of Gettysburg. It is um, slowly becoming much more um, Hispanic in its character. So we're seeing an influx of social service organizations that um, are involved with the Hispanic community and those sorts of things. We, we try to um, slowly, and obviously not going to happen overnight, I and mean, we're fighting a, a tremendous battle here, but slowly try to have these neighborhoods engage the residents in the kind of services that are needed to help lift them out of poverty. I will say this, it has been the biggest challenge for us because the Department of Community and Economic Development tends to be a very bricks and mortar type of organization. Um, they do not spend a lot of their money on, on community development in the sense of what, that you're talking about. And I think that some of those things are as important, and in fact maybe more important, than spending money on bricks and mortar. So we are about to embark on, a, on kind of a revisitation of Elm Street and say what has worked and what hasn't worked over the first decade of that program. And I, I, my great hope going forward is we're going to put even greater emphasis on this question of de uh, delivering social services into the neighborhoods that are designated as Elm Street programs. Once we do that, um, the, the concept will be available to anybody. I mean, Main Street and Elm Street as concepts are not limited to DCED designated programs. Anybody can try to implement a Main Street or Elm Street program, whether or not you are um, part of the DCED funding cycle. I'll, I'll, I will get into that part of it um, in just a few minutes. Now, what kind of, you mentioned a bunch of organizations, mm -hmm. organization, community development, right. national trust. Right. Uh, is there a list somewhere of all these agencies <laughs> and what they're responsible for? Who answers who? Um, boy. <laughs> Uh, there's, there's not a, a standard kind of list that we can go to. It's a, it's a good idea, though, to put kind of a gloss, an organizational glossary together.